A very good day to you people. My name is Mohit and today I'm going to show you how to make a simple contact form in uh, Dreamweaver CS5. Let's start. I'm going to click on this create new HTML button. Uh, guys, uh, please have a look that I'm in the classic workspace and uh, when I'm in the classic workspace, this is the way my interface looks. So I have uh, certain tabs out here and uh, also certain buttons out here. Okay, so I'm making sure that I'm in the the forms tab and then I'll click in on the first button the form button the moment I do that guys uh, this is a dashed red color dashed uh, area that uh, shows up in the design view okay also if you look down in the properties the method method is set to post now while creating forms guys uh, there are two methods usually the post and the get uh, post is uh, seen uh, usually okay and where you see the actions is where the PHP script will usually sit but guys this tutorial uh, will not talk about the PHP script of the programming which is uh, the necessary to grab all the data and send it as an email we are only going to going to talk about the creation of the form okay how to manufacture the form how to present it to the user but uh, what happens on uh, the click of the submit button whatever happens after that will not be covered in this specific tutorial okay also guys notice that uh, this specific form has an ID form 1 okay so let's start now I'm making sure that the cursor is blinking inside this uh, red color color dashed area and then guys for the organization of the form it's best to use a table so I'm going to insert a table I'm going to say insert and then a table okay guys so I've already done my calculation the kind of form that I need uh, requires me to have six rows and two columns the table which should be 500 although this may change according to your uh, needs I don't want any border thickness I want the cell padding now guys cell padding is uh, the space inside each cell or each table data TD as it's called okay I don't want any cell spacing neither do I want any header okay yes I do want the caption for the table and uh, let me call it contact form okay I'll say okay guys uh, next what I'll do is I'll make sure that the left hand side column is selected by clicking on this down arrow and then uh, through the properties I'll make sure that the alignment is set to right similarly for the right hand side uh, column after making sure that I select the column I'll make sure that the alignment is set to left for the text okay next guys I'm ready to drop in my uh, fields inside the table the text fields so I'll click on the second uh, uh, button from the left right it will ask me for an ID and a label now this ID is extremely important guys this is what sh what the uh, will be put inside the script okay and will be spelled just the same way we are not allowed spaces uh, in the ID field at all okay so I'm gonna say a name and for the label I'm uh, able to use spaces as well as multiple words so I'm gonna say name space a colon and uh, I'm making sure that attach label tag using for attribute is checked on should be on by default if you're using Adobe Dreamweaver CS5 and the position should be before form item I'm gonna skip the access key that is like a shortcut key and the tab index because uh, they won't really make much of a difference when you're working with a small form I'm gonna say okay all right next what I'm gonna do is guys I'm gonna click this text field and drag it onto the right hand side very good so now guys uh, you should have understood why do I have uh, a table because uh, this makes sure that the the form is properly organized also guys uh, it's important to note here that I have dragged the the text field from uh, the left hand side to the right hand side but uh, you shouldn't be doing it vice versa that way the form will not work very good 
Next what I'm going to do is I'll make sure that my cursor is on the left hand side column once again. Bring in another text field and as I said the ID is extremely important because that is what the maybe the PHP scripter will be using. In fact he will be using the same ID. So uh, I'm going to say email without spaces. Can't make a mistake there. And uh, for the label I'll say email space colon. Okay. And let me drag the text field go on to the phone number text field so I'm gonna say phone and phone number say OK drag the text field then I'm gonna bring in uh, a text area so I'll I'll give it an ID of comments and a space of uh, and a label I'm sorry of comments space colon I say OK and drag the text field. Uh, I'll make a few changes here. I'll go to the phone uh, number text field and make sure that the maximum characters is uh, let's say set to 13. All right. I'll go to the comments area, the text area, and uh, I'll change the character width because it's too wide right now to let's say about 30. All right. Next, guys, uh, I'm gonna bring in one uh, list or a select menu. Okay. Let me click on this icon and uh, let me say, let me give it an ID where, and uh, as far as the label is concerned, I can use multiple words. So, where did you? hear about us <coughs> sorry I'm gonna say ok and uh, let me drag it onto the right hand side alright and uh, now guys I need two buttons for my form uh, a, a clear form button and a submit button so I'm gonna make sure that my cursor is blinking in the left hand side column and uh, let me get the first button as far as buttons are concerned guys I don't need the label by default no label tag is selected and for the ID let me say reset form and uh, I'll say ok but then what I need to do is I will need to go to the properties and make sure that the reset form uh, option is on alright and uh, also I can go to the value field and say reset form okay as you can see it then becomes like the label for the button and uh, the way the button uh, looks now has changed now I'll uh, go to the right hand side uh, field uh, of the table or column of the table and drop in yet another button let me say the ID is uh, submit and for the label I'll skip it I don't need the label I'm gonna say ok and I have the submit button here as well I can remove uh, the value and um, value is nothing but the button label guys so I'm, go I'm gonna say send email out here okay with an exclamation mark very good so I have changed both the button labels guys what I can do is I can just uh, drag this divider a little bit here that I, I think that'll be better let me take a preview in uh, Google Chrome to see what I've just done let me call it form and uh, alright looks cute uh, but there's a problem here I don't have anything in the select of the list menu so let me drop in some data okay I'll make sure that uh, the list menu drop down arrow is selected and then I'm going to click on this uh, list values tab okay and then I need to pass in some data so it's asking me for uh, item labels and their respective values so so where did you find uh, about us probably on Google so I'm gonna say on Google and uh, let the value be Google although as far as the value is concerned guys it's absolutely okay to include spaces it's not an ID but value is uh, the value that will sit inside the ID 
and that ID was where W H E R E if you remember then for the item label on uh, Yahoo Yahoo and uh, let me call it Yahoo for the value tab again and on uh, YouTube chances are that you found me on YouTube so YouTube okay and it could be some advertisement so some advertisement and let the value be advertisement All right and uh, then I'm gonna press tab again and uh, let's say choose one and a dot 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 period 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 and I'll not pass in the value but what I'll do is I'll click on choose one and click on this arrow and take it right to the top and then I'm gonna say okay let me show you a preview of what I've just done so if I drop down the arrow now you can see that I get the various options okay so it's, it's a very simple compact and uh, useful form I'm sure you understand what the reset uh, form button is for if you enter wrong data or if you need to enter it again only all you need to do is you need to click on this reset form button and it clears the form for you so that you're uh, you can uh, set it again okay now this part was uh, pretty simple guys and now the next part involves the formatting okay let me start by creating a compound rule and it really is a compound it's a little complex guys for people who do not understand attribute selectors do not understand uh, compound rules well they may get a little confused but uh, let me attempt to make it simple for you okay <coughs> guys uh, what I'm gonna type here is pound sign form one so the rule that the compound rule that I'm about to create will affect uh, form one the form that we are working on and then I'm gonna put a star sign an asterisk okay it means that it will apply to all elements that have an attribute name now guys I, I checked the code that was generated for the form and I noticed that all the form fields okay have the attribute name let me show it to you a little later okay and uh, should be this this rule should be applied in the focus state so a colon focus and uh, so basically I would want all the items in my form which has an idea of form one uh, in the focus state should to have a specific background color okay and that background color I've decided to keep it as a hash or a pound sign FFC then uh, let me say okay okay let me show you a preview and then I'll explain the way the compound rule was constructed now that okay so let me save the changes to the form and uh, the moment I click in the name field now guys you should notice that I have a specific background color and as I tab down that color shifts from one field to the other all right you can see it again it's even uh, taking control of the buttons in the drop down menu wonderful amazing okay now <coughs> I told you I'll explain the meaning of uh, the compound rule that I've just created let me go to the code uh, view guys now guys notice that the ID for the form is form 1 and uh, inside which I have input tags and all the input tags uh, do have the name attribute as you can see here in line number 21 you can see that in line number 25 we have the input uh, tag which also has the name attribute the same uh, you can see in line number 29 as well it has the input tag and uh, it has the name attribute so also in the text area tag I also have the name attribute okay and uh, I also have the name attribute here as well 
for the select tag okay so guys I, I figured it out I figured it out that uh, in my form which is an ID of form 1 all the <coughs> the fields the text areas the buttons displayed have an attribute called form so when I say uh, a star a star stands for any element that has an attribute name and in the focus state should have a background color of hash FFC that's the reason it has acquired the background color wonderful awesome awesome the way the compound rules can help you okay next guys what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna locate the table opening tag and pass in some inline style I'm gonna say style and uh, background image I have the image ready go to the browse button and uh, choose my background image okay let me show you a preview in Google Chrome alright looking wonderful let me then pass in some uh, <coughs> styling to my uh, caption as well so I'll look at the caption opening tag and then I'll say class okay and uh, I'll say CC CC for caption class alright so I, I need to make a, a class called CC so let me click on this new CSS button and uh, I can choose class I can put CC out here I can say OK and then as far as the background color is concerned let me choose uh, let's say FC9 alright and how about a font uh, color of uh, 900 let me say ok and let me take a preview ah looking nice wonderful alright now guys uh, that I've uh, actually created the form uh, the next step is validation now what do I mean by validation it's quite possible guys that in the email field the user may be inputting the telephone number or maybe the zip code and we need to make sure that the data that he's putting is the correct data for that specific field now this is called validation let's see how this can be done so guys uh, I need to select the form uh, first and the best way to do is it in the code view locate the form opening tag click there okay uh, the moment I click there guys the the form gets selected next what I need to do is I need to search for the behaviors tab okay you can get behaviors from window uh, behaviors as well and then you need to click on this plus button you should get this validate form option okay then I have four fields out here name email phone and comments okay uh, the first field is uh, selected I'll just click on the required checkbox so now it's a required field it's a mandatory field now and it's going to accept anything because this anything radio button is on I'll select the email field and uh, it'll accept only email now for the phone field I'll say accept only numbers and make sure it's required as well for the text area I'll, I'll make sure it's required as well and it should accept anything alright so for the email I'll make it required as well I forgot that okay guys so all the four fields are now mandatory fields okay and they accept data only in a specified format let me say okay and guys uh, you should notice that uh, it validates on summit although guys you can set it to validate on blur as well but I don't think so that's the best uh, option so guys my form is ready now let me take a preview in Google Chrome and let me put in some data alright and I'm deliberately making uh, some mistakes here and let me say send email and I get a JavaScript alert which says that the email address must contain an email address phone must contain a number so basically this is uh, because this alert or pop-up came up because it's just telling you that the form uh, could not be validated properly and you need to put the data once again alright so guys I hope you like this tutorial uh, I'll see you next time uh, with yet another Dreamweaver uh, CS5 tutorial or it could be Flash with ActionScript 3. Peace. Bye-bye.